Last month, Google unexpectedly released its own IDE with integrated AI. I've already spent some time using it, and today I'll share my impressions, show you how to get started, explain what's special about the built-in AI agent, and how it interacts with the browser. Hi, I'm Nick, and I've been developing software for over 20 years. On this channel, I share my experience, insights, and thoughts about IT. So, what is Google Anti-Gravity? At the moment, it's a completely free IDE from Google. Essentially, it's a fork of Visual Studio Code, but with integrated artificial intelligence and several improvements built around it. Anti-Gravity is available for all major platforms, macOS, Windows, and Linux. Let's download it. While the app is downloading, let's take a quick look at the pricing page. As you can see, there are currently two plans available. The first one is the individual plan. It's free for now and perfect for trying things out. The second one is for developers and can already be used for everyday work. However, note that both plans have usage limits, and while the limits for the paid plan are fairly high and reset every 5 hours, the free plan resets only once a week. So, as I mentioned earlier, the free tier is suitable only for testing, but for any meaningful use, you'll need a paid plan. Okay, now let's launch the IDE and take a look at it. When you open it for the first time, you're greeted by a setup wizard that lets you import your settings from a few other AI-powered editors. Currently, those are VS Code and Cursor. After that, you can choose a color theme. I usually use a dark theme in my editors. But today, just for the experiment, I'll try the light one. Next, you're asked to configure the behavior of the AI agent. You can always change these settings later. So for now, let's leave everything as it is. After that, you'll see a few more configuration options for the editor itself. Here, I'll uncheck the option that installs a bunch of additional plugins. I don't need most of them, I'd rather add the ones I actually want later. And finally, you'll need to sign in with your Google account. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. On the other hand, if you're already using a paid Gemini AI plan, this is convenient. Your subscription info will automatically sync with the IDE, and you'll get higher usage limits. All right, we've finally reached the main anti-gravity interface. But before we go any further, let's take a look at the models available to us. First, we have two Gemini 3 Pro models. It's not entirely clear what the difference between them is, but most likely the one labeled High is the better one. There are also two Claude models, as well as an open source model from OpenAI, GPT OSS. So yes, the selection is very solid. For now, let's choose Google's most powerful model available at the moment, Gemini 3 Pro High. Okay, now let's open a project and see how this IDE behaves in a real scenario. I've opened a simple project with just three files, the same one I used in my previous video when I talked about setting up Live Server in Z. At first glance, Antigravity looks just like Visual Studio Code, but already configured out of the box. I think most of the interface elements will look familiar if you've used VS Code before, so I won't go through them in detail. Instead, I'll focus on what's unique here. On the right panel, we see a field where we can enter our AI prompt, followed by a drop-down for selecting the model, and another drop-down for selecting the mode. Planning means the agent will first create an action plan, confirm it with you, and only then execute it. Fast means the agent starts working immediately. It's faster, of course, but the code quality may be lower. Still, this mode works well for simple, routine tasks. Overall, this panel is quite similar to what you'd find in editors like Cursor or Z, but the most interesting part begins when we open the Agent Manager window. So, the Agent Manager window is the central part of the Google Anti-Gravity interface. This is where you manage all your AI agents. In this window, you don't write code yourself. Instead, you control agents that write code, test it, or search for information on your behalf. The revolutionary aspect of this system is that in the Agent Manager, you can run multiple agents in parallel. You don't have to wait for one agent to finish a task before starting another. They can all run simultaneously. For example, while one agent is writing documentation, another can refactor the authentication module, and a third can generate unit tests. Let's take a closer look at this window, because it's the key feature that truly distinguishes this editor. The Inbox tab contains the list of all active and completed tasks. Each task shows its current status. For example, planning, coding, or verifying. The Workspaces tab represents isolated environments where agents perform their work, each tied to a specific folder in your file system. You can think of this as an analog to projects. 
The Playground section provides virtual environments where you can quickly experiment with something without being tied to any existing files. And one more important note before we start working with the editor itself, for Antigravity's browser integration to function and for agents to actually use the browser, you must have Google Chrome installed along with a special extension. Installing it takes just a few clicks, so you shouldn't run into any issues. Alright, now that we've covered the basics, it's finally time to try anti-gravity on a real project. Let me quickly remind you what project I'll be using. It's a simple HTML page that includes a CSS file and a JavaScript file. The page has just one button and when you click it, it shows a standard pop-up with some text. To start, I'll ask it to do a fairly simple task, add a contact form to the page. Since we selected the planning mode, Antigravity will first generate a plan for how to implement the task, and then it will execute that plan step by step. And because my review policy setting is set to always proceed, the plan and all its steps will be executed automatically without requiring any additional confirmation from me. However, for more complex tasks, I would recommend using the request review mode. Once the execution is finished, you'll see a final report summarizing all the work that was done. Let's take a look at the result. As you can see, the form was added and everything looks quite neat. It even includes basic validation for empty fields. Let me also check whether the correct URL is being used for submission. Yes, it's sending the request to contacts, but since we don't have a backend yet, we're hitting an error. That's exactly what should be happening at this stage. Okay, but this was a simple workflow, something you can find in many other IDEs as well. Now let's try the feature Google is really emphasizing in this editor, running multiple agents simultaneously in the background. So I've prepared two simple tasks. One is to add a block with a header and a navigation menu at the top of the page. The second is to modify the form and add a new field that accepts only numbers. I launched them one after another without waiting for the first one to finish before sending the second. And as you can see, they are running simultaneously, in parallel, handled by different agents, without interfering with each other. If needed, you can run even more tasks at the same time, but for demonstration purposes, two is enough. You can open each of these threads to see what's happening inside, and if necessary, you can adjust the process or make changes to the task. As I mentioned earlier, I currently have the fully automatic mode enabled, so these two tasks should complete entirely on their own, without any input from me. Okay, both agents have finally finished their work, so let's see what they produced. The first agent added a header with a menu at the top of the page, just as I requested. The second agent added a new field for promo codes to the form. It only accepts numbers, exactly as specified in the task. Everything else on the page remains untouched, nothing broke. Both threads are saved within the current project and you can return to them at any time to review or even continue the work. Well, I think I'll wrap it up here. As you can see, Google Antigravity is very similar to other IDEs with built-in AI capabilities. But at the moment, it has two particularly useful advantages. First, the ability to run multiple agents simultaneously with a clear and intuitive interface for managing them. And second, access to the Gemini 3 Pro model, which, based on independent tests, performs extremely well on developer-focused tasks. And third, it has a very tight integration with the Chrome browser, which allows the agent to automatically test the changes directly in the browser on the running project. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Take care.